know it's been a long time since I journaled. Yes, a lot has happened. So much I haven't had time to journal. Yes, I'm going to share. Buckle up, because it has not been pretty. Here we go. The morning after Aiden called and Ash took the call, told me my other boyfriend was going to be absent for a longer while, talked me into trusting them and gave me the big O. Ash was out for a run and I was curled on the sofa in the living room of the cottage, glaring at my post-its all over the walls, worried about Aiden, war, and a pimple that seemed to be forming on my chin that heralded my period coming. That was when a knock came on the door. It was Dad. Alone. No Mom, no Marcus, no Gabe. Just Dad. It was then it struck me that my father and I had not once in our lives spent time alone together. I felt suddenly shy. It was whacked, but give me a break. I was 34 years old, and this was the first time I was alone with my father. Hey, I muttered, sounding as shy as I was feeling. Good morning, honey, he said softly. Okay, I might have mentioned this, but my dad is super good looking. He also looked 10 years younger than my mom, which meant he looked about 10 years older than Gabe, which meant he looked about 10 years older than me. Yeah, this felt weird. That said, even though Gabe looked my age, Gabe himself was 10 years older than me. He was mom and dad's firstborn. Which pissed Viv off because it meant she could still be bossy big sister, but she couldn't be bossy firstborn with all the rights and privileges that Viv thought she should have in that role. That said, she pointed out frequently that she was still firstborn sister, which continued to afford her said rights and privileges. Sue and I just didn't agree. Then again, we never did. You want coffee? I asked my dad. He shook his head. Can I sit? I nodded my head. He sat. Okay, I mean, well, hell. This was weird. I received another call, he shared. They're sending in the A-team. Well, you know, I do have other things to do, I reminded him. A war to plan, Yule presents to buy, Christmas parties to attend, broomstick maneuvers to master. I can't be flying back and forth to Washington at the whim of the powers that be. And I shouldn't have to, considering I am the power that is. All right, so I was being snippy and diva-esque. Sue me. Did I want peace? Yes, I absolutely wanted peace. Everyone wants peace. But money didn't grow on trees. Without Bewitched in full swing, how was I going to afford another killer professional but still chic and hot business suit and Yule presents and get my magical larder up to snuff? It took me a whole year to do that last back in England. And speaking of England, I missed it. And that was just the way, and I was learning I didn't like a lot of ways in life, including that way. When I was in England, I missed America. Now that I was in America, I missed England. Bah! I know, Dad said. I told them if they wanted to meet, they would have to come here. Fine, I muttered. Dad hesitated a second before he asked, Do you have something on your mind? I looked right in his eyes. Which of the 7,623 priority somethings would you like me to talk about? And mind, those are the priority somethings. I have another 18,294 secondary somethings up there, too. Whatever you want to talk about, he offered. I looked out the window and took a sip of coffee. Matty, you love each other, I said to the window. Sorry? He asked me. I looked to him again. You and mom, you love each other, like a lot. Yes, he agreed. How did you do it? My sweet girl, he whispered. <laughs>